I'm a pediatric endocrinologist. I take care of children who have diabetes. As part of type 1 diabetes, we have to treat them with insulin, and we want their blood sugars to be as normal as possible. That means that they're going to have some lows. And why do I say that? Because the insulin that we have is not perfect. It's not like our body that matches everything we eat with the exact right amount of insulin. We're trying our best to do that, but to keep good, tight control so that that patient doesn't have complications when they get older, like eye disease and kidney disease, we sometimes find that they end up with low blood sugar. And that has its own set of problems. In a child with a developing brain, there have been studies that show that they may not learn as fast as their peers. Um, that's just one thing, but think about it on the, on the chronic level. So you've got a person who has low blood sugar and that person doesn't have any way to recognize it for themselves and they get lower, lower, lower. Eventually they pass out. And if no one can come to help them, they could actually die. And so where a dog can come in there is because we know the dog smells something. We aren't quite sure what it is, but we have numerous now, both case study reports, as well as more thorough medical reports of dogs actually sensing the low blood sugar in a patient, notifying the patient or a caregiver or a loved one of the patient, that the patient is low so that an action can be taken, which is giving glucose in some form, so that the, the blood sugar comes back up before anything severe happens to the patient. Um, I have seen this work with, with people who have received trained dogs. I have also seen my grandmother's dog do it, had never had any training, which is what got me interested in the field in the first place. Um, I do believe, though, that we need to be very careful when we talk to people about having a diabetes alert dog. Uh, people would love for that to work, and it does work, but there are also people who do not do the proper training of those dogs, and we need to not have patients that aren't vetting what's being done to have the dog trained. If it's a, it's a kind of a buyer beware situation that there are good dogs out there and there are really good trainers out there, but they're scammers too, like in other fields. Only this time the stakes are so very high because it can potentially really hurt someone. So my mission in life and hope is someday to identify what the dogs do um, smell and someday to have a certification process started in this country and hopefully some standardized training methods that will help everyone. But I'm going to tell you one story because I know that this patient won't mind me sharing it. Um, he was a student at college and he had a severe hypoglycemic episode. Now mind you, this is a young person who was climbing mountains repelling, very, very active. Um, the hypoglycemic event that he had was so significant that he ended up with a motor impairment in his legs following that episode. His parents, rightly so, were very concerned about him living so far away from home to be in college, and they were on the brink of wanting him to pull him out of the college. Um, because this person got a dog, he was able to graduate from college and graduate school and is a successfully employed person at this point in time. Who knows if he'd have been pulled out of school, what would have happened? He could have become so very discouraged. He may have, he's a very wonderful person. He may have gone on and gone to school, but it certainly would have slowed him down. The dog was allowing him to, uh, make, to make that transition from a very independent young person to a little bit of dependency, but not having to be dependent on parents and being able to self-correct his blood sugars because I saw them really improved after the dog 